In this video, we're going to look at how to get Marmoset quality renders in Unreal Engine 4. Now, I've heard a lot of people complain about Unreal Engine 4 not looking as good as Marmoset. And while it's true, Marmoset does not look exactly the same as Unreal and vice versa, we can get maybe 90 to 95% of the way there in Unreal Engine 4. The first step to doing this is we need to go to the Free Asset Showcase Blueprint thread created by Osman. This is a nice little blueprint that allows us to easily create HDRIs or add HDRIs to our scene. However, this download link is dead, so we need to go down to post 35 to see a link that works. Posted this link a while back. You can download it here. I will link this page in the description. Now, what we need to do is we need to install this or extract it, I should say. Now, let's go ahead and extract it to our content folder. Go back over to UE4. We'll notice there's nothing here. This is because we need to restart the editor. Now let's go ahead and make a comparison between Marmoset's render and Unreal Engine 4's render. Looking at Marmoset, it looks pretty good. Uh, there's a lot of detail, a lot of texture detail there, good reflections. Coming back to UE4, let's go ahead and bring this into the world. Press F to focus. Now this leaves a lot to be desired. It does not look very good, and on top of that, it doesn't look the same, most importantly. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new level using our starter content, or our showcase content that we just downloaded. So let's go ahead and press Control N and create an empty level. Don't save. Going into our showcase and blueprint, we can bring our blueprint showcase into the world. Let's go ahead and zero that. And now let's grab our model and zero that as well. Press F to focus. There's a strange bug in this blueprint that you have to press G in order for everything to show up correctly. Well, um, it's starting to look a little bit better. It has reflections that are interesting now. Go to the blueprint, we can actually change the uh, HDRI images to whatever we want. In my case, I think I'm gonna Maybe use the skate park for now. I may adjust that later. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to take a look at our textures because that's most likely a big issue that we're gonna have. This is our roughness texture. And the first thing that we notice is uh, our MIP gen settings are set from texture group. Since we're doing a render, we want this on no map map settings. If you're rendering a large scene, you may want to use something else such as Sharpen 10 or maybe even Blur depending on the purpose of your texture. Next thing that we notice is our roughness map has sRGB set to on. Roughness maps should never have this on. We need to have that unchecked. Let's go ahead and save that. Now for the normals, let's go ahead and set that to nomad maps as well as the metalness and the diffuse. Now that we have those set correctly, we can look at our mesh. It definitely looks different. 
go ahead and check another blueprint or uh, n another HDRI. I think I may use the staircase or the greenhouse. For now, I'll use the staircase. The next thing to check is we need to see what Marmoset uses for its gloss map channel. And they use the red channel. So let's take a look at our material. And I have this checked for a red channel. So that is synced. All right, it's definitely starting to look better. Now the next thing that we're going to want to do is we are going to want to add a post-process volume. You can find that in visual effects right here. Let's go ahead and zero this. What we're going to do is we are going to set this to unbound. What this does is it prevents, when leaving the volume, it prevents the post process from changing back to its world parameters. And this is just for convenience sake, really. Let's go into settings, film. Let's enable crush highlights. That is a feature I like quite a bit as it makes a lot of details pop out. Now let's go to auto exposure, min and max, and let's set this to 0.5 on both. The lens flare and make sure it's disabled. Let's go to ambient occlusion. Go ahead and enable intensity, radius, power, and quality. And up the quality to 100%. We're going to change the power to the, its maximum. And then we're going to mess around with the radius to see what would be a good radius for us. It's actually up the intensity, and so we can see it in its uh, most extended state. I'm a fan of 40, so let's go ahead and stick with that. Let's change this back down to 2, maybe 3, or even 4. I'm thinking 4. Now, let's go to miscellaneous. I'm not a fan of temp temporal anti-aliasing, as it blurs textures and it blurs everything. Uh, it's good for gameplay, but it's also not good for motion. So in this case, since I'm doing a high resolution screenshot, I'm just going to leave this on FXAA. Now to screen space reflections. I'm going to enable the intensity and quality and max roughness. I'm going to up the quality to 100%. I'm going to mess around with this slider to see what it does. I will leave that at its default. Now the final thing we'll be doing is we'll be creating a, a sharpened material or an unsharp mask to uh, make these details a little bit more crisp and then we'll, we'll take a high resolution screenshot to get really nice detail. But first I'm going to check our settings and I'm going to mess with the exposure or the intensity fringe and vignette. I think that looks pretty good. Now let's take a look at our sharpened material, which I have already made. This material is basically the exact same material as Kula's 
uh, Lightroom showcase material. So you can also look at it there. So we have a vector one of zero. This lead, leads to um, the first append A, second append A, third append B, and fourth append B. Our second vector is a is at uh, point zero zero one. This leads to our first append B and our second append A. Our third constant is set to negative point zero zero one. And this leads to our second append B and our fourth append A. Now we also have a texture coordinate node here. This is set to 1 and 1 on the UNV tiling. And this is plugged into um, several different nodes. And we what we have here is, is uh, add nodes. Um, adding the texture coordinate to each append. If we can see the paths more easily like that. Now each add node plugs into a scene texture post process input zero. You can search scene texture and that is the correct node. What you'd have to do is then set that to post-process input zero, and that will be correct. Now each of these are plugged into an add, and then the two add nodes are plugged into an add. You'll notice another scene texture, post-process input zero, what goes into the UVs there is uh, the texture coordinate. Now that plugs into a subtract. We have a divide here, which come, uh, is dividing the add from all these previous nodes. And four plugs into the subtract, which plugs into a multiply of one which plugs into a desaturation and an add node, which adds it back into the scene texture post-process input zero, which then plugs into the emissive color. Finally, if you haven't already, make sure to change the material domain to post-process, and we will apply that. Now coming over to our post-process, we are going to open up the Blendables tab, add a Blendable, and choose an asset reference. With the Material Sharpen selected, we will hit the arrow. You'll notice immediately that things are instantly sharper. If you missed it, I will delete that and re-add it. Much sharper. All right, that is pretty much it for getting our mesh ready. Now what I'll do is I will adjust it to take some renders. First thing, let's go ahead and reset that to zero. Let's see, what does this change? So I want that to be 180. Because so I want to get a similar side shot. Rotate this slightly. And that's perfect. So one last tidbit of knowledge is a little feature called bookmarks. And what we can do is, after full screening, we can go to bookmarks, set bookmark, and set bookmark zero. 
what this will allow us to do is to save our position so I can jump back there to do another render and I'm going to take one from up here as well something like that and I'm going to bookmark that now I'm going to jump back to bookmark zero I'm going to pull out the high resolution screenshot I'm going to take a screenshot that's just to open the folder and I'm going to delete that image because it's too re low resolution for what I want to do I'm going to kick it up to three I'm going to take a screenshot and then I'm going to jump to bookmark one I'm going to take another screenshot perfect now I'm going to take a look at my screenshots and they're very nicely detailed and all of that uh, noise didn't make it through it came through as a very crisp nice image and as you can tell it's pretty comparable to marmoset it's not exactly the same it doesn't have quite as much detail but it is very comparable in my opinion just comparing the two all right i hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and i'll see you in the next one